Rhythm is described as a strong, regular, repeated pattern of movement or sound. The systematic arrangement of musical sounds principally according to duration and periodical stress, and in art, a harmonious sequence or correlation of colors or elements. We consider rhythm something approaching normality, the rhythm of daily life. When one moves rhythmically, they do so in a way that feels right. When one has rhythm, they dance to the beat in the expected way. So when you think rhythm, how the hell does it relate to this? Mad Max Fury Road, released earlier this year, blew everyone away. It's considered by many to be an action masterpiece, a linear journey through a well-established post-apocalyptic world, filled with vehicular carnage and stunt work that we so rarely see these days. Though chaotic, the action is easy to follow, with the open spaces and colourful heroes and villains always established enough to give us something to lock onto. And of course, the director, George Miller, is a technical master. Look here how well he uses the camera angles, the movement and the editing to allow us to follow the action without issue. When you have action scenes that last almost 20 minutes, ones full of different elements like huge explosions, near-death experiences and moments of character development, how do you make it so that we can not only keep up, but not get either overwhelmed or bored? The answer is rhythm. Moments of loud and quiet, successes and failures, fist pumping and teeth clenching, and what keep us going throughout, as the stakes increase at a constant level, gradually building to an explosive finale. The action's pitch rises and falls rhythmically, never allowing us to become complacent. The final action-packed sequence of Fury Road is an incredible tour de force of action filmmaking. Well directed and constantly exciting, it holds our attention for the full 16 minutes. A big part of why that is, is the rhythm. Edited by Margaret Sixel, who had to pull the film together from 480 hours of footage, the final 120 minute film made up of 2,700 individual shots. We are taken through the action at a ridiculously fast pace that never truly lets up, and yet within it has smaller stories, little events that hold our attention. It feels crazy, but there's a method to the madness. Each smaller tale within the grander action narrative has its own stakes, obstacles that are then overcome to be followed by another obstacle and so on. Each lends something to the action sequence as a whole, whilst helping uphold the rhythm that has been established. The objective of our protagonist here is to get away from Imit and Joe's warband and get themselves and Joe's wife to safety within his lair. That is the greater need of the protagonist, Max and Furiosa, but just having them drive for a quarter of an hour and having random crashes would not be enough. We need punctuating moments that offer their own rewards. Take this sequence for example. Follow the rhythm of it. Max kills a thug, only to then fall almost to his death only to be luckily saved by Furiosa. Next, Furiosa is stabbed, but then the bad guy is killed. But Max and her are now both in dire trouble, the worst they've been so far. Nux then fixes the engine, which may be their biggest success so far, giving them the chance to get away. But then this guy comes along about to kill Max, raising the tension further, only for Furiosa to ram him into the car beside and kill him. Then this guy comes along to try and kill Max again, only for Nux to kick Max to relative safety. Every single moment of tension is rewarded with a small relief, only for another moment of great attention to follow it. Every step forward is followed by a slight step back. The whole sequence does this more and more, the stakes raising throughout steadily, each painful moment increasingly nail-biting, and each moment of relief increasingly rewarding. Key to these smaller moments throughout is that we know the characters they focus on. Up to this point we have spent at least some time with various key antagonists and those are the ones Miller chooses to focus on along with our heroes. Every decent action sequence needs its own antagonist. Sometimes there'll be ones established during that sequence, and some will have been established earlier in the movie, through introducing numerous villains at different points throughout the movie with their own key action scenes, and bringing them together in the final one. We see each meet their match as if they were each their own antagonist of that particular part of the greater sequence. This is how you make an action scene on numerous fronts work. John Woo did it brilliantly in Hard Boiled, having several enemies for Chow Yun Fat's tequila show up in various action scenes earlier, only to then come back later and play a part in the final grandiose hospital shootout. George Miller has stated that his preferred version of the film is in black and white, with only the musical score to accompany the image. This makes sense, as the film adheres so much to a musical structure, with of course the aforementioned rhythm a huge part of that. Each enemy is a verse in the greater song, with then each verse containing lines of their own risk and reward. There is a constant rhythm of potential reward, obstacle, reward, obstacle, and so on, as the whole thing builds towards an inevitable conclusion. If a song goes on too long, you can get bored. 
and if it is too short, you can feel you didn't get enough from it. The length of an action scene should be dictated by the storytelling contained within it, but to make it work, you need just the right structure and just the right rhythm to hold all the pieces together and keep us focused. But to make it work, find that beat and the stories within the greater action sequence to accompany it, and you'll find us at the edge of our seat, as if we were watching a stage.